Good evening, everybody. I hope you all are doing well this evening. Kind of late. I usually don't do any uh, Q&As this late, but I got uh, Ezra Shetler on here with me today. And uh, you are from what, Minnesota? Yeah, Minnesota. All right. And so if you guys got any, uh, any uh, this is a Q&A, so if you got any questions, just put them in the comments and uh, we will answer your questions. Uh, so you grew up Amish? Yeah, I grew up in uh, Holmes County, Ohio, actually. Okay. Down here. And then grew up till we moved to Kentucky when I was 16. And then I left the Amish there and went to Minnesota. And, yeah. So you lived in multiple Amish communities. Yeah. Did Was that kind of hard as a kid growing up, moving around different communities? Well, yeah. It was kind of. Um, it's the moving part from Ohio to Kentucky, yeah, it was pretty hard. But different rules every time? Yeah, Kentucky had a little bit more rules. You know, it was the same church and everything, but yeah, no different rules. Now, which one was you at the longest when you grew up uh, before you left the Amish? Is that Minnesota? Which, uh, where I was the most? Well, I left the Amish from Kentucky and moved to went to Minnesota. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Now, yeah. was that community there in Kentucky? Would, would you was that considered Old Order or Swartz and Trooper Amish? In Kentucky, it was Swartz and Trooper Amish. Swartz the same church that I grew up in Ohio, but they had a little bit more rules. A little bit more rules. Yeah. Okay. Now, was you baptized in the Amish? Uh, no, I was not baptized. Also, you left before you got baptized. Yeah. Finally, I find somebody like I did. I mean, I was just a couple weeks away, and I just dropped out. I was like, ah, this ain't for me. So, uh, now were you under eighteen then when you left? Or? Yeah, I was seventeen. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I just turned seventeen actually. Uh, uh, that June, then October, I left. Okay. Yeah. I was uh, a groomsman at my brother's wedding mm -hmm. before I left. Gotcha. And then two weeks after that, I left the Amish. That was kind of fun. They didn't come after you to try to stop you? No. Not, nobody coming after me. Yeah, lots of times I've, I've heard of uh, some leaving before 18, and they were so desperate to get them back that they would go and report it to the cops and do everything they could to try to get you back Amish. So they didn't try that, huh? No, they, they didn't try that. My... My daddy, guess I don't think he would have had the nerve. Probably not. Didn't have the nerve to do that. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. So what? What some of the? Uh, what some of them rules? I've, I've talked a lot of, in the videos about some of the rules that I had in my community. Did you guys have like? Uh, was you allowed to have two lanterns on the buggy or no? Yeah, we were allowed to have two lanterns, but we had neighbors that they could only have one that lantern. So other Amish that were close by that only could have one lantern on the buggy. Yeah, and I always thought that was kind of, didn't make any sense at all. That just shows you the kind of rules from one community to another, and you guys were neighboring another Amish community that had stricter rules when it comes to lantern then. Mm-hmm. Wow, yeah, there's, I mean, there's, what about like the cuffs on your shirt? I pointed that out. Yeah, those, those could only be one inch. One inch. Uh-huh. Well, ours was an inch and a half. Wow. So our community, if you had a cuff on your shirt that was uh, more than an inch and a half, you couldn't please God. But in your community, you couldn't please God unless it was one inch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just love uh, talking to a lot of you that left the Amish because, you know, to be honest with you, until I started doing these interviews and Amish Q&As, I, I failed to realize how many different Amish communities, I mean, they're all different. I mean, even the Swartzen Troopers, like, they're all different. Some of them have this rule. Even if it's two or three rule difference, that it's still got a, got a difference in it. Yeah. It's just amazing <clears throat> how the rules are, are what they hang their hat on uh, rather than, than the Word of God. Now, was you saved at all when you was Amish? Well, I knew of God, I mean, but, you know, I went through the church. I was... As long as I went to church, I thought that'll get me to heaven. But I actually got saved when I left the Amish then. Left, yeah. That's when I got saved was afterwards, too. I didn't I didn't leave necessarily to follow Christ. Uh, I was just fed up, fed up with everything. And 
wanted to go sow some wild oats. See, the, the grass looked really green on the other side. Would you say that was your motive? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> a lot. And when I came out here, I felt so free, you know. Yeah. I felt so free, I was like a wild animal running loose. And I just did what I want for a couple of years there. Yeah. I think a lot of us experience that. We we get out there, we feel the freedom, and we just kind of go hog wild for a little while. And Now, uh, Susan Miller, she says, uh, if, she asks if you have any relatives in Galga, Galga, Galga County, Ohio. I don't Gosh. think so. That's over close to Cleveland area or something, I think. You know, I don't, I don't know any relatives there. You were close to the Holmes County area, right? Yeah, I grew up in Holmes County, Fredericksburg area, right there. My mm -hmm. at home address was Fredericksburg, Ohio. Oh, okay. I know so, where that's at. Yeah, Fredericksburg. Yeah. So did you guys, uh, you guys probably had the old manure spreaders and, uh, and yeah, no rubber tires, no rubber tires, oh, no. and yeah. steel wheels on the buggy. Steel wheel. No triangle on the buggy. Oh, that's not like my community. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you had orange triangle, that was a little bit too bright of a color, right? Yeah, yeah. Because the triangle, uh, the reason we could have, i that's what I heard him say. The reason we couldn't have the triangle is because a triangle has three corners. It's a devil symbol. Oh. That's what they say. The things they come up with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Susie Byler says, I grew up in Fredericksburg. Susie Byler. Susie Byler. Is she, uh, probably, uh, Checky Byler's daughter, maybe? I don't know. I'll, I'll let her answer that in the comments. She probably heard that. But, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of Amish mixed together in that area over there, in the Holmes County area. Susan Miller says, Galga County is about an hour from Holmes County, one of the largest Amish communities in the U.S. Oh, well, wow. I'm not very familiar with that county. Yeah, I'm not either. Yeah. William Hershberger says, wonder where you grew up, Ezra. We were just talking about that, over by Holmes County, right? Yeah, Holmes County. Was there a name attached to that church, like the, mine was Abe Mass Church or? You know, Joe Church is what that one was. Joe Church? Yeah. Like, that's what everybody called it in my community. They called it the Cho Church. Oh, okay. Because apparently it was Cho that... Daughter-in-law, the name you mentioned. Susie Byler says uh, daughter-in-law. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Dennis Swartzen Trooper says, love this. I was a ABAM a from Mount Hope. A.B. Amish from Mount Hope. Abe Amish. Oh. Abe, Abe Amish from Mount who, Hope. Who is he? That's a Swords and Trooper. Dennis Swords and Trooper. Uh, yeah. You know him? I don't know. See all them Amish names popping up on there? There's a whole bunch of Amish on here. Yeah, I know. Ex-Amish, I should say. I'm not calling y'all Amish. <laughs> uh, Susan, Saloma Miller says, what are your parents' names? I might know them. Dan Shatler and Sarah Hertzberger. Now it's Sarah Shatler. Well, Shorty. <laughs> they'll know him by that name. I know they will. If it's somebody that knows them, they'll know what you're talking about. The nickname or whatever? Uh-huh. Yeah. Susan Miller says it's pronounced Chucky County in Amish. <laughs> in uh -huh. Amish language, they call it Chucky County. County. <laughs> that sounds more familiar. Uh, but I still don't really know where that is at. Susie Byler says, my maiden name was Miller. Christina Miller, love these lives. Love listening to all those testimonies. Yeah, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of testimonies that have blown my mind. Some of the stuff that the Amish, the ex-Amish people are sharing with me. And that's why I love to have them come on and just share their testimonies. And I kind of feel like I had it made compared to some of those that have shared some pretty gruesome things. Actually, while we're just mentioning that, there was there any... Uh, Let's see here. Oh, my word. Your dad and I went to the same... And then it cut off. Susie says, my dad... Your dad and I went to the same... Probably same church or same school. Or, yeah, probably. Huh. Dennis Swords and Trooper says, wow, my mom was a shuttler from Mount Eaton. Man, you got a bunch of relatives on here. I know I do. I figured I would. <laughs> you got a bunch of relatives on here. I grew up in Chucky. Christina Miller says, sure, I know who they are. Who they are. 
Yeah, well, you got some people on here that know your uh, elders. Uh-huh. Your mom and dad and probably your bishop. Yeah, my my grandpa was a bishop. He was, uh, uh, his name was Emmanuel Shetler. Emmanuel Shetler? Uh-huh. Now, uh, Teresa Horton, she says, when Amish are born, do they get a birth certificate and social security number? My son-in-law was curious to know. Well, I can tell you my community, they do not. How about yours? Mine does, actually. They do get them? Yeah, I got a birth certificate, but when I left the Amish, I didn't take it with. She said school, by the way. My dad went to school. Went to the same school. Yeah. Gotcha. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. The birth certificate was printed off? Like, you actually had one, like, a real one in hand? or Yeah, I think so. But they hide it from you, so... You know, uh, if you ever leave the Amish, you can't find it. Gotcha. <laughs> well, I, I know they reported my name when we were born. They would go to the health department and report it. It's in the system, and that's how I was able to, you know, get one sealed in my hand, printed off once I left the Amish. But we were forbidden to have Social Security numbers. Nobody in my Amish community has a, has a Social Security number. It's forbidden. They look at numbers as the mark of the beast. They just, they don't do it. Mm -hmm. So did you guys get Social Security numbers? In your community? No. We, well, we did get social security numbers, but we got them in attempt. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Yeah, there's a lot of people that's asked me that before, you know, it's just because they, uh, well, they wasn't even able, my community wasn't even able to be part of the, uh, like the taxation, you know, the, the system that paid taxes uh, because, I mean, they paid taxes on school and property, but as far as like your paycheck, all those taxes and everything, I mean, they were tax exempt. On income tax. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you don't have a social security number, and <laughs> it's like they don't know who you are. I mean, you're yeah. just a foreign person. Yeah, right. Jacob Shetler. No, oh, that's my he, brother. That's uh, your brother? Yeah. He says, hi, Ezra and Eli. Nice to see you on here. Hmm. Yeah, he came out of Minnesota and came to visit me today. Him and his wife. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we uh we decided to do a video. We we're sitting here talking about Jesus earlier, man. We had some nice conversations and talking about the Word of God, and it, it was a great time. I'm glad you guys came down. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Carla says we keep freezing up. I don't know. So far, it looks good on my end. So far, it looks good on my end. I'm not sure why it'd be freezing up. Now, uh, Ezra, we've we've been talking a lot about these. Uh, testimonies, uh, abuse in the Amish. I've had some pretty uh, painful testimonies that I've had on here with uh, people that came forward that were sexually abused, physically abused. And I've shared how my dad is, uh, was pretty abusive, you know, physically as I feared him. I really badly feared him because he just beat the snot out of us sometimes. Yeah. Do you experience anything like that? Yeah. Well, my dad, I remember a couple times where I did something in school. I got a spanking for it in school, but then I came home and still got a spanking from my dad from it. And I remember one time specifically where he did it so hard that I had blood welts on my back. For about a week, I couldn't lean my back against the chair because it hurt so much. Actually draw blood out of your back. Yeah. So now it's no longer discipline, it's now abuse. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of, uh, I don't think a lot of people understand that, that they, they have anger, like a lot of anger. Pro my dad had, he would snap and you didn't want to be around. Uh, I shared with you earlier how my dad used a two by four on my brother, my oldest brother. And I remember coming down out of the silo just to prevent him from killing him. I thought he was going to die. But wow. sometimes they just get carried away. So, mm -hmm. so he, he would actually draw blood, that kind of anger. Mm -hmm. I felt like sometimes my dad would just, keep on going and it would seem like he could never stop after he gave a few cracks he just give a couple more and left after that a couple more chew me out and still a couple more after that really i mean it was just hmm yeah i mean it, it does happen i mean there's a lot of a lot of abuse that happens inside the amish communities and i think the biggest problem is uh they're not part of the system out here and the church, the Amish church, is able to forget and forgive and move on. They they always want to move on. They don't want to want you to talk about any of that stuff because they do know the system out here that uh -huh. they would get arrested if if, if if people find out about oh, it. Oh yeah. Uh, there's another person saying that yes, you keep freezing up. I don't know what the heck's going on there. It looks good on our end. It does. It's not freezing up here. 
like Paul also says that it, the video keeps saying video inter is interrupted. I haven't seen that on our end. Doesn't say anything about video interrupted on our end. It says it's live, but uh, maybe it's freezing up on everybody else. I don't know. Hmm. Hopefully not. So also, uh, as when it came to uh, to hunting, uh, you, you talked about the triangles on a buggy. You guys didn't have that. Yeah. Was you guys at least able to wear hunter's orange for hunting? No, not at all. You couldn't do that either? But Yeah, I don't think we could wear any hunter's orange. Wow. Not anything. Yeah, we uh, we would have got shunned if we'd have done that. They they didn't allow that. They said it's more important to follow the rules, obviously, than for giving in and following the law. Mm-hmm. I kind of figured that you being from a Swartzen Trooper... That that's probably what they did as well, because they they seem very old order, like the old order Amish and Swartz and Trooper are all kind of the same. Yeah. Well, now that I remember, actually, sometimes we would maybe uh, pin something on our back, like an orange, uh, something homemade with orange material. We would put it on our back and front, like just pin it yeah. on there somehow. Uh huh. But that was that was pretty much it. Mm -hmm. But you guys also didn't weren't allowed to have no tractors in that community. No, not at all. <laughs> that was a no no. What about an engine to grind up your grain? Like we were allowed to have some diesel engines, but only for certain things. Well, to grind up the grain, like to like for thrashing, you mean? Yeah, yeah, we could have that. Did you have the diesel engines for that, where you put the diesel fuel in it? Yeah. Okay. I think that's the only time I think we were allowed to use diesel engines. The thrashing, the oats, and the wheat, and the corn, all that. Okay. Like that big, massive engine. Uh -huh. But if, if you tried to put that on a on a tractor, the same engine, and you had a tractor, it wasn't okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> because it was on wheels. Right. All right, we got some more comments coming in here. Uh, Rupin says, uh, looks like you guys are moving a 1,000 miles an hour, so it's a little fuzzy for him as well. I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, Ephraim Mass says, keeps freezing up on my end, too. Did you guys come from the Swartz and Trooper Amish? Yes, Lydia Swartz and Trooper. He came from the Swartz and Trooper Amish. Yeah. And let's see here. Got uh, Ruben Stusman. But you were allowed to sleep with a girl before marriage? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Man, that is crazy. See, my community? Oh, no. Yeah, we did that uh, bet dating thing. Did you do the bundling? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the craziest thing ever. I mean, some of you Swartz and Troopers that left, I, I'll be honest with you, it blew my mind that you guys were allowed to do this bundling thing when we we, we could sit there like at a table and talk with each other or some sometimes they would allow like her sitting on your lap. But in order to go to bed and do bundling was forbidden. Yeah, I don't see why it's not forbidden there. I mean... So you could actually lay in bed on a first date. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. That, that just blows my mind. I mean, so what, what was the process? Where, well, you go to bed, sleep with her, and the hug and kiss, whatever. And, you know, the temptation that goes with all that. Well, yeah. And uh, you be sleep there till morning and head out from there. Was there a certain curfew point where you had to be done? Curfew point. Cur like curfew to where, hey, this hour, 1 a.m. or 2 a.m., you had to be done? Not specifically for me. I okay. could almost... Well, I'd always try to be out of there before day. <laughs> <laughs> before daylight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to milk cows, buddy. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Ruben, uh, a lot of the swords and troopers, they do bundling. I, I just... Yeah, we, we wasn't allowed to do none of that when in my community. Uh, Enos Swords and Trooper says, we were only allowed to use red for hunting. Yeah, that's probably what we used to. No yeah. orange, just red. Uh, so sometimes they, the darker color, they would look at it as, well, let's try that. It's better off not doing Yeah, but then you color. can't wear a red shirt because <laughs> you're, you're uh, mocking Jesus if you wear a red shirt. Okay, so a red shirt, you're mocking Jesus, that, that's just not okay. But let's put red around your hat to go hunt. Uh-huh. Isn't that mocking Jesus, too? <laughs> <laughs> well, that just shows you how confusing the Amish can be when it's just about rules and, you know, it can be very, it can make your young mind, I remember being an early teenager, 13, 14 years old, I started getting rebellious because it didn't make any sense. You know, like you mentioned earlier, 
you had an Amish community that was close by, only could have one landowner buggy. Mm-hmm. We had an Amish community that was very more modern and liberal in our neck of the woods that had bicycles and uh, they could have electricity for certain things. Oh, I that see, out as a 13, 14 year old, I looked at that Amish community. I thought, hmm, they can do that and they're still pleasing God and going to heaven. But me, if I do that same thing, I can't please God. Yeah. So you can see how confusing that can be. I remember telling my dad at home about, uh, uh, you know, using chainsaw. Why can't we use chainsaw? Then he told me the story about how they got into that chainsaw thing where they can't have any chainsaws anymore because two Amish guys had that saw where they used two Amish guys for one saw and they raised the guy with a chainsaw. And the guy with the chainsaw won, so they... No, the Amish guys won. The Amish guys won with the, the one with two handles on the end? Uh-huh. And that, that won? I think so, and that's why wow. they couldn't have any chainsaws anymore. Or else it was the other way around. The Amish guy won with... The guy with the chainsaw won, and so that was too easy. Well, I can tell that Amish guy that lost with the chainsaw... He didn't do it right. Yeah. Because if I'd had a chainsaw, I'd have beat him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would have beat him. Yeah, definitely. Mary Yoder says, LOL, yeah, and, but, no, soon, I'm not sure what she meant there. It's a set up for trouble. Probably about the bundling. It's setting up for trouble, I think is what she meant there. Uh-huh. Ruben Stutman says, if Swartz and Trooper refuses to sleep together before marriage, they get shunned. Would you get shunned for that? Before marriage, if we ref- not if I wasn't a church. If you I- refuse to do that process of bundling, would you get in trouble for that? I never heard of that. I don't know. I know some. I some uh, swords and tubers that said that they had to follow that process, or they could have got shunned for it or whatever. So, I, I, I mean, mean I you you gotta follow that, but but I wouldn't if I wouldn't want to. I'd run off. You could have just left and yeah, there's no way. Yeah. All right, uh, Lisa says, smoke like little chimneys. Did you guys smoke? Yeah. What? I used to smoke a lot. See, that's another thing that surprises me about a lot of sports and tubers. You guys were actually allowed to smoke, while my old order Amish community, oh, smoking was completely forbidden. Yeah. My dad, he would smoke like a chimney, and so do all my other brothers. Except the ones that left don't anymore. Was it mainly cigars or what, okay? So was it was there a rule, what you could smoke and what was it cigar cigarettes whatever? Yeah, you couldn't smoke a cigarette because uh, that was too worldly. But you could smoke these big long cigars, a lot more smoke there. So you you could smoke the cigar, but if you smoke a regular cigarette, that was too worldly. Yeah, you couldn't smoke that. <laughs> that just yeah, and you know what? Be honest with you, uh, I remember picking up like cigarette butts as a teenager walking to and from school I'd pick up these cigarette butts and I would just light them just to act cool like hey I'm I'm, I'm an Englisher <laughs> <laughs> we'd do that too we'd sometimes buy them though too and that's another thing if you get caught smoking a cigarette if you're a church member you'd get shunned for get that shunned. too I had a little bit of like my mom could smell everything so if I did one of those little cigarette butts on a, you know beside the road and just burn it and my mom could smell the scent on my shirt. Oh, yeah. Hey. Oh, I got home and she smelled that. Oh, the <laughs> paddle was brought in and I got a spanking. Oh, yeah. This <laughs> rap got brought out. Uh, Daniel Yoder says, uh, Eli, did you hear about bed courtship before you started doing, doing live? No. Before I started doing these live videos, I never heard of bed courtship in any Amish community because... The, the Amish community I come from and the ones that we fellowship with that had similar rules never would allow any bedship court, courtship, you know, in bed. So obviously when I met swords and troopers like you, I mean, it just sounded strange to my ears because we wasn't allowed to do that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, Saloma Miller, if they would not go in bed with the girls when on a date, they were in big trouble. So her community, she's saying if they didn't go to bed, and do bed courtship, they would get in trouble. Yeah, well, they would kind of because, I mean, you wouldn't be looked good at if you'd run off. But me, 
It wouldn't work out. I'd run off. So now I am. I'm, I just thought of something. Now I see why the Swartz and Trooper have some of the biggest rates of sexual abuse because they're forcing bed courtship mm-hmm. for dating. Yeah, I mean you're asking for trouble if you're if you're letting your young young ones to go in bed and sleep with each other for dating. Mm-hmm. I mean, how bizarre is that? Not a very good example for the young ones going. That's up. for sure. Wow, that, that's one thing just. Blows my mind. Some of the Swartz and Truer Amish have battery starters on their diesel motors. I uh, wasn't allowed to have them either. Yeah. I know uh, my neighbor used to have that same church as me, but then later in years, that was not good enough, so what he had to get rid of that. Now all at once the rule changed. Uh-huh. Well, you can please got with it before, but now, now, not, he's not going to open the door anymore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, rules, rules, and more rules, folks. Yeah. Ruben Stutzman says, but yes, if they say they don't believe in it, they get shunned. They have to agree with it. Yeah, you basically have to re- agree with all the rules the church makes up in the ordinance, or you're going to get shunned if, if you uh, try not to follow any of those rules, because it's all about doing that. See, I, I truly, the way I look at it now, as, since we're out and we understand it better, we're saved. You look back, and, and really the bishop and the rules is in the way. Uh, because they believe you have to go through that to please God. Yeah, because you can read out a revelation where it says, you know, that verse where it says, says uh, it says... Uh, By not adding? Yeah, don't add to the Word of God uh, yeah. more than what is in it. Yeah. And uh, that's exactly what they're doing with the ordinal rules because you know all those rules are written in paper yeah and they're adding to it yeah they're adding to the word of god thanks for sharing that that is so true because the bible says in revelation 21 that uh you shall not add or take from the word of god Mm -hmm. so if if you have a letter ordinal and you got your rules in there and that's number one now you're adding on top of the bible because the bible is all at once not enough for you and if, if you make that number one, and they'll shun you if you don't go by that, and then people like me that share, tried to share the gospel with them, they'll say, you're reading into the Bible too much. But you can't take their rules. You can't do overdo that, because you have to do that. So yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. They're basically adding to the, the Word of God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, because that makes a lot of sense. Philip Hilde says, but only the brown cigarettes, right? Yeah, the brown cigar. Yeah, yeah. the big... Brown ones. Big old cigars. The <laughs> filter on the cigarettes are too much like the world. Yeah, Mary, yeah. Mary Yoder's from a Swords and Trooper as well. Okay. Uh-huh. West Salem, Ohio, I think is where she was from. Uh-huh. The same name keeps popping up on there. Mary Shetler says, Ezra, I'm wondering if you're related to me. Mary Shetler? I don't know. Where are you from? I didn't. You know what? I just realized in this video there's a whole bunch of Shetlers on here. Yeah, I didn't know there was that many Shetlers. And uh, Shetlers are about as popular as the Yoder. There's every, they always say every Amish community has got a Yoder in the woodpile. Now I'm starting to think every Amish community has got a Shetler in the woodpile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ruben Stutzman says, uh, oh, the rules changed. We. <laughs> what if God's rules kept changing? Well, God's word never changes. Though. God's word never changes. He had never allowed his word to change. Yeah, you're so right. I mean, if you know, why is that not enough? You know, I mean, God's word has always been the same. His commandments to stay the same, and we can follow that and be set free in Christ. It just don't change. But when it's set up by man and man-made rules, it always changes. Man can keep with their word. By the way, have you ever thought about that? How they set those rules up, and then the bishop and the elders can't keep the rules themselves. Yeah, <laughs> because sometimes they want to be more modern too. Yep. And they'll give in, and if they actually, if the bishop or the, I've noticed in our community, if the bishop or the elders, the preachers, uh, wanted something more modern, if they wanted it, or if they broke that rule, all at once it's legalized and it's okay because they can't even keep that rule themselves. Now let's just go ahead and okay it. If they want it, they change the rule so they can have it. But but if I would have been the first one to bring that up, hey, let's have a change. Oh, 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 you go to hell for that. Yeah. But if the bishop's son gets busted with one, the bishop's going to try, oh, let's just okay it. Let's just vote on try to okay the chainsaw then. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, he's right. Rules do change. Uh, Ruben Stutzman says the Amish honor the bishop as their holier than the rest. They class him as a holy connection between God and you got that right. They believe uh, the bishop is who you go through. Uh, that is the only, kind of like the Catholics looked at the priest. You know, they go to the priest for forgiveness. They go to the priest for all their answers, thinking that you know the priest is the way to get to God, to please God, and that's kind of the way the Amish are. Mm-hmm. The bishop is kind of who they go to for answers. Uh, they they confess. The Bible says we confess our sins to the Lord, right? Yeah, it, yeah. It's it's almost the Amish almost believes like this. It's like. The church is the way to choose in the life. No one comes to the Father but through the church. It's almost like... Yeah. You nailed it. Because they do. Yeah. They, yeah, that, that verse about Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. They'll use it as the, the bishop, the ortnum, the Amish church, is the only way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. <laughs> I like how you pointed that out. Yeah. And then Philip Hilde says there is a group in Bern, Indiana that had the same rule regarding cigarettes. Only the cigarette type cigars were allowed. I don't know if it's still that way or not. You know, that, that might have changed too. I mean, sometimes they change stuff. And, uh, Daniel yeah. Yoder, my family that was with Troyer Amish Church does the bed courtship too. And that one of reasons why my parents left that church. Well, I'm glad your parents left that church because that bed courtship sounds so bizarre. Oh, my goodness. How many Amish girls did you date before you left? I won. Just one? Yeah, I left with that one, too. I oh, brought, you left the Amish with that one? Yeah, brought her out of here. <laughs> really? Yeah. So are you, uh, you're married now, but your wife now wasn't Amish, right? No, she was not Amish. Gotcha, gotcha. So. You got any other uh, siblings that lie? I do have one sister, two brothers. Yeah. One sister and two brothers that left the Amish as well. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. One lives here in Ohio, the other lives in Minnesota, and my sister as well. Okay. That's awesome. I was really, really happy when my brother left, my youngest brother. Uh-huh. And it was my youngest brother, so I didn't, because I didn't really know him when I left the Amish. So I was, I was thinking, I'm never going to have any family that's going to leave the Amish, and then he ended up leaving, so. I remember when I went to pick up my brother Jacob on the way up, he was like, yeah, it almost seems like we Shetlers, we stick together. <laughs> <laughs> the Shetlers stick together. My cousin Dave Beachy from Wyoming just said, where are you from? Uh, Holmes County, right? Yeah, Holmes County. Grew up there. And after that, we, when I was 16, we moved to Kentucky. And then I left the Amish there, went to Minnesota. So Yeah, been moving around. Yeah, now I'm a certified auctioneer. Certified auctioneer? Yeah. Auction that Yahtzee thing off. Sorry about it with $50. I'm going to bet $50. Would have given me $50 now? $50 now? $50 now? $55? Would have given me $55 now? $50? Would have given me $55 now? $55 now? $55? Would have given me $70 now? $70? Would have given me $70 now? I love it. I love it. I love it. By the way, Amish are really into auctioneer. Let me tell you. I go down to visit my brother. My brother down there in Huntington, Tennessee. And he has a clock on his wall. And when it chimes, it actually uh, has auctioneer. That's an auctioneer in it. Wow, that's yeah. cool. Thank you for doing that. You're pretty good. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Did you guys, you guys wouldn't have been allowed to have that in a clock, right? I uh, no, no, we wouldn't have allowed. I always wonder one, but I wonder where to find them because I think they came to Holmes County, Ohio, to get it. Okay. Yeah, because it had the regular chime in the clock, and it was just every time it went off, it was an auctioneer. auctioneer. Wasn't it like every hour? 12 auctioneers? Every hour. Every hour? Yep. Yeah. He had a different voice, a different... You could hear a different guy. Every hour. Every hour, yeah. Yeah. But it's amazing how they had that recording of the auctioneer in there, in, in inside that clock. I mm-hmm. thought that was amazing. Yeah. But Amish are really big into that. So when you were growing up Amish, you probably wanted... That was one of your dreams? You wanted to be an auctioneer? Yeah. I always wanted to be an auctioneer. That was kind of dad's lullaby to us kids. And I picked it up from my dad. So... So you you do auctioneering now? Do you make money from it? I was back up auctioneer one time, and yeah, I'm slowly getting into it, getting my business up and going. So I want to go on my own. Yeah. But yeah, I did an auction two weeks ago, on a Saturday up there. So. Well, you did really good because you sold this Yahtzee uh, game for what seventy five dollars? Seventy. I was asking seventy five. <laughs> I love it. Salome uh, Miller says, Eli, you need 
to have someone explain how the Swartzen Troopers played tag in weddings. Oh, uh, boy. You know anything <laughs> about that? Well, a little bit. I mean, I was in it one time, so I only know of that one time. Let me guess. Some foolish playing went on there? Yeah, well, they go around. They, we had a, a, one of them steel poles kind of pipes holding the ceiling up in the basement and we'd all stand there you know and then one guy would go over snap a girl like that snapping and then she'd chase you around that pole and get your tag and then those and that guy that she tagged would have to stay there beside the girl really and then a girl takes a turn and goes and snaps a guy, and uh, the guy goes and chases the girl around that pole, and... Really? Yeah. Huh. I never heard of that. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. I didn't make any sense out of it when I did it. I think it's stupid. Yeah, the games they play. <laughs> uh, Saloma Miller, she must have been from the Swords and Troopers because she's familiar with that. Mary Scheller says, I'm from the West Salem one of the Sam Shetler's grandchildren. Sam Shetler from where? There's a couple Sam Shetlers. couple Sam Shetlers? She yeah, she's from the West Salem one. Uh, I know one from uh, up by Missouri, I think he lives at now. So probably, uh, might be like the Yoders, might just be different, uh, different Shetlers too. Yeah. Reuben says, in their eyes, Jesus was God's son, but the bishop is the step between God and Jesus. Wow, I tell you what, I believe, I agree with that. I actually mm -hmm. agree with that statement. Yeah, Jesus is, oh, the church is before Jesus. Yep, the rules and the bishop is all before Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. he, it's actually in the way of preventing you to have a clear walk with Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. They do have no, no, uh, you know where the Bible says, walk by the Holy Spirit of God. They don't do that. Mary is talking about that game you're talking about. I think she says, oh my goodness, I thought about that once, LOL. You had to kiss cousins and everyone. We didn't do the kissing part. You didn't do the that, kissing that part? That I remember, that the one night I was there. Yeah. But I don't know, maybe some do. Some probably do it a little different. Susie Miller says, when I break, break my promise, when I break my promise, there are rules, I have to be punished. But when I left the Amish, they could break their promise without a problem. Wow. That's true. Yeah. Because when she broke the rules, she got punished. But when I left the Amish, they could break their promise without a problem. So they broke their promise. No way. See, and that, that's just how yeah, they are. They, they break, they, sometimes they break their promise just to shun you. Yep. Yeah. That's right. And then I've even seen them where they encouraged one spouse to leave the other. Just because one of them left the Amish. They think it's then okay to separate the marriage just as long as one of them wants to stay Amish because they think that's the only way to heaven. No kidding. I, yep. I didn't think of that, but yep. wow. that's just... I have now had testimonies of people contact me where the, they left together and one of them wanted to go back. And also, one of them never left, the other one wanted to leave, and the Amish encouraged them to separate. Be done with the marriage as long as one of them wants to stay in the in the, with the rules in the church. So they would make somebody work out, uh, do a divorce to follow the church. To follow the church. Because the church is more, that oath that you make to the church is more important than the marriage oath. Wow. Yeah. That, that'll blow your mind. Yeah. That's just crazy. Reuben Studeman says, every member has to kiss the bishop on the lips to be a member and kiss him on the lips to be forgiven of sin. Uh, many communities I've, I've seen do that. They, they will, when, you, when you're taken back into the church. Did your community do that? No, just the bishop. Just the bishop? Yeah. That's what and he's talking about. Bishop, kissing bishop on the lips. Yeah. Just the bishops kiss the bishops. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. I know they're all different too. Yeah. Some of them practice that. Some of them don't. Yeah. But if you, if you uh, broke a rule... Uh, in order to be forgiven, did you have to kiss the bishop on, on your lips? On your well, hand? I was never a church member. So. Oh, you left before you got baptized. Gotcha. But I think you had to, actually, from hearing my brother yeah. talk about it. Joe Gingrich says, how did you two come to see the light? 
Well, 2017 is when I got saved. God brought me down a notch and let some things happen in my life to get me shook and woke up. That's how God works. I got saved by uh, 2019. It, yeah. And a couple years ago. I was doing that same kind of stuff. And yeah. Sowing wild oats like I was. Uh-huh. And then all at once, God does something to wake you up. Uh-huh. Bring you from the darkness to the light. Exactly. Aaron Stutzman says, did you guys cut up on dating couples? Not sure what he means by that. Cut up on dating couples. Cut up on dating couples. Susie Miller says, our courtship was really weird and awkward as well. All through, it wasn't, it wasn't bed courtship. Listen, when youth take baptism classes, they don't say take baptismal classes, but they say following church. Well, yeah, that's what it's all about when they get baptized. It's about following church and the rules. That's the oath that's most important to them. Mm-hmm. Because you're baptizing in... You're not really baptizing for the right reasons. You know, you're baptizing to, to tell them, now I will follow the rules. That oath that you make is number one. Because mm-hmm. they, they make two very important oaths. Marriage oath and the baptism oath to the church that you'll follow the rules. And the baptism oath... When you make that to the bishop in the church, that's number one mm-hmm. overall. I know that's most important to them. Hey, guys, thank you so much for doing this. O- OMG, I know where Holmes County is, Shelley uh, Burkholder says. Philip Hildy, my father-in-law was shunned for things that people in this community now have as much as he had and more now. Sadly, it's okay. So his father-in-law... His father-in-law was shunned for some things that now is okay. But yet, back then, he was getting shunned. Oh, wow. So now they they can get to heaven with using that stuff, and they were going to hell before. That's something how that works. He used to get, my, my dad would get shunned for some things, and they would just put him six to eight weeks through shunning process, and now that same thing he got shunned for could be okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mary Shetler says, Oh my word, you are one of Emmanuel Shetler's grandkids. I am, yeah. Your grandpa and mine would have been brothers. Huh. See, got some relation on here. I do. I <laughs> don't know who she is, though. I, what, which grandpa was that? Yeah, her grandpa and your grandpa, Emmanuel Shetler, would have been brothers, the way it sounds. Uh-huh. David Beachy says, when did you leave the Amish? How long ago? Uh, 2017. Oh, okay. So you've been out very long then. No. About four years? Yeah. Four or five years out of there? Susie, our courtship was really awkward as well, although we didn't have bed courtships, she said on there. Mary Scheller, oh my word. Oh, that, that's the same comment, ain't it? Ina Schwarzenegger says, playing in the weddings is absolute foolishness. Yeah, I, that's what I thought. I didn't make any sense out of it. it playing in the weddings? The weddings in the basement. That's that basement part, snapping the girl. Oh, that snapping? Yeah. That you just explained? <laughs> they did that in the weddings? Uh-huh. Yeah, you go around and snap a girl. She come chase you around the pole. and <laughs> you know, It kind of reminds me of... Uh, I don't know, it sounds weird, but it kind of reminds me of chase stripping. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, you guys had some, uh, I don't know about you, sports Troopers. You've lost your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Hershberger says, The Catholic Church also thinks like the Amish in that the church priest is between the... Yep. I refer to the, uh, for the uh, Catholics quite a bit as the Amish bishop because they actually are set up the same. They answer to the priest while the Amish answer to the bishop for everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, you, you can't make a human your God, man. I'm sorry, but... No, I'm not sorry. The Word of God is the Word of God. Jesus says, I'm the only way, the truth, and the life. No, I'm so God. why are we making a man who we answer to? Man becomes God. The priest and the bishop is not God. No. Not at all. Mary Yoder says, My dad said the playing tag thing is to represent somehow of Jesus. <laughs> that's why they made you kiss the younger generation or some areas they were not as strict about kissing but other areas were very strict 
<laughs> I don't know how that represents Jesus, but hey. They'll, you know what? Don't, a lot of things they do, I think, they'll try to make it sound biblical just to justify why they do it. Uh-huh. But still, if you ask them the why behind everything, they always back it up to the church, and they can't back it up to Jesus Christ. Yeah. If they could, every, if they could back up everything they did to the Word of God, and if it's biblical, then, then they're good. Mm -hmm. But usually, they can't go to the Word of God to back it up why they do what they do. Yeah. Because it's tradition. Mm -hmm. Supposed to do what your forefathers did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Melinda Gingrich, we never got away without tagging a guy and not kissing him. <laughs> Didn't get away with it. Mm -hmm. Saloma says, back in my day, we had to kiss every girl or guy we chased. Oh, wow. So mm -hmm. by community, you can see some of the ex-Amish on here. Their experiences were different than yours, different than mine. Uh-huh, and she says, back in her day, that, you know, that's a little, that's further back, but... Still, I mean, some of them guys, they're not as lively nowadays as they were back then. Yeah. Yeah, because she says back in her day, they they kiss every girl or guy we chased. It didn't matter if you had a boyfriend, you'd be kissing other boys. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> they punished you in church if you didn't kiss them. <laughs> no way. What kind of Amish community are you from? <laughs> I mean... That's some of the most bizarre stuff. My goodness. No kidding. I tell you what, y'all are interesting. All you ex-Amish on here, I've learned so much from you guys. I mean, just every community is different, man. It's, you know. And, and it's what man has set up. Yeah. Man sets these things up and says, that's what you got to do. Mm -hmm. And gets many of, well, what's a cult? What, what is, how is a, a, a cult defined? It's, the definition of a cult is one man starting something, setting it up, and getting many to follow it. That's a cult. Yeah. You know, it reminds me of that verse from uh, 1 Corinthians, says in Paul, where Paul was referring to the people where it says, I follow Apollos, and I follow all these different groups. And then Paul specifically said, but I follow Christ. And it yeah. reminds me of that. I mean... Yeah, because they were confused. I don't know what you're talking about, Corinthians. Because they were confused of who... Well, who do you say I am, Jesus said. Because, I mean, they were all following different... Satan was doing all kinds of confusion and using man to do this and this and this and this because there were so many different things happening. And then Paul said, Jesus. I follow Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. And then what did Paul say? He, he baptized like three people and he says, uh, he's glad he didn't baptize all of them because I didn't baptize them in the name of Paul. Yeah, <laughs> so they can't say that he baptized them in the name of Paul. Yeah. yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ, but not baptize me in the name of Paul. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Larry Kern said, I'm just wondering what you guys do when tornado warnings are issued. How do you guys know when the weather gets bad? Do you guys take shelter if a tornado warning? Yeah, we usually go in the house of the basement. Yeah, because all Amish have basements. Yeah, big basements too. So I've... I've uh, one time seen one going right over top of my house. I was hiding in the basement. After it went over my house, I went out and watched it go over my house, and you could see it underneath in the hole. Really? Yeah. Wow. But, yeah, they all have basements, so usually uh, they get to go to the basement if there's a tornado warning. I think all Amish pretty much have a basement. Let's see here. Shelly says, how old do you have to be? to be baptized in the church and what determines it. 17 is when we started and then it would finish about 18 because it was about eight Sundays long. Yeah. Um, my church was like usually 17 uh, to 19. Usually, uh, sometimes it went to 20 depending on... Mm -hmm. It was kind of up to your will but mm -hmm. not really. You Sometimes they come after you. Yeah, we we really didn't have a choice at that age when that age group was ready at seventeen. Uh, you had to do it. It was tradition. You had to do it. Um, if you didn't, you really got looked up on. You know, my, my my mom and dad really got a lot of backlash when I stopped two weeks shy of getting baptized because it's just something that was tradition and you did it. So since I stopped and backed out, oh, they just thought that was horrible. Mm -hmm. But I should have had that choice. If you're not ready to get baptized and your heart ain't ready, you should have the choice to back out. Mm-hmm. 
Mary Shetler says, Sam Shetler from Homerville was my grandpa. You said there was a couple of Sam Shetlers earlier, right? A couple of Sam Shetlers. Yeah. Saloma Miller, a lot of younger generation don't kiss anymore in weddings when they're playing tag. And I think it depends on the community, actually, because I've seen a couple of comments now where it's like, wow, yeah. they had to kiss. And then, uh-huh. Just all the Dan Schrock says, tell him about the show in the weddings. The show. What show? Are you talking about that tag thing again or something? Probably what he's referring to. Uh. I mean, weddings were something we looked forward to, I'd say, because, well, in our community, we got candy bars. <laughs> we, they'd give out candy bars in weddings. Yeah. I was always looking forward to that. The Neva Hugger. The, na- <laughs> <laughs> the Neva Hugger. The side sitters or Neva Hugger, the bridegroom or whatever yeah. what you want to call it. I'm trying to think the English term for it. Aaron Stutzman says, cutting up on dating couples means going to their house after the singing, making yourself at home, like popping popcorn, maybe typing their, tying their shoestrings together, <laughs> unharnessing his horse, and hiding uh, the harness yeah. trying the buggy. Did you guys ever do stuff like that? Oh, uh, yeah. I, we, uh, we would usually take the buggy shaft and... Take, flip it on the site, put the shaft all the way underneath, and then flip it back up, and then the next morning he'd have to do all that by himself. How brutal. Or we could, or we'd take the seat off the bucky and turn it end for end <laughs> so that he would drive home backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you guys sure did a lot of pranks. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then we'd uh, sometimes take a scissor. I never did that, but take a scissor and cut the horse tail off. What? A little ways up. <laughs> wow. That is a little bit too far. I'm as sure can be pranksters. <laughs> In my community, one thing I do remember of is taking the buggy wheel off, taking the buggy down into the fence, sticking the, the hub oh, through the fence, and yeah. putting the wheel back on. I've heard of that done before, too. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, they, they can be goofy. Right? Uh-huh. And, and when you when you start dating, they really like to pick on you. Oh, yeah. They come tomcatting you in there. That's what it's called, tomcatting. Uh-huh. In yeah. there, and they would uh, smoke in your room, smoke it all up. Just, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so if you go on a date, you want to keep it secret because as soon as they find out you're dating somebody, they're going to do pranks on you. Uh-huh. Leroy, Leroy Keim says, if I stop and think about a lot of the Things we did as Swords and Trooper Amish is absolutely devilish in nature, like the wedding games. And so there's another one about the wedding games. Uh huh. So you Swords and Troopers really had some crazy wedding games going on. Yeah. I'm yeah. gathering that by all the Swords and Troopers that are on here. And you know, I didn't even know they, well, of course, I was just at, in a wedding one time in the basement, but I didn't know they did that kissing part. The kissing part? Yeah, I'm just. That probably varies from one community to another. Uh-huh. Some probably make you do it. Like that one girl earlier, she said you had to. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's wow. craziness. Dave Beachy says, I think Mormons are more like Amish, I believe. Yeah, they're kind of similar too, but they got multiple wives though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Amish don't believe in multiple wives. <laughs> yeah. Larry Kern says, I'm from west side of Cleveland, Ohio, and just wondering because I don't know much about you guys. Yeah, the Middlefield Amish are close by you over there. Yeah. Middlefield's real close. Mary Yoder sings, I I, uh, I think our forefathers had lost their minds and brainwashed the next generations. And thankfully, we came to and now know how foolish that is. Uh-huh. I mean, when we're in it, it's tradition and we're taught that stuff. So we kind of just... But yeah, now being out, I mean, we can talk about this and, and some of it's hilarious. Yeah. Because we realize how really foolish it is. And we can definitely, yeah, it's really hilarious. And we can definitely now see the light, you know, and we can see that, you know, all those. Praise rules. God for delivering us. Yeah, all those rules don't mean anything. Yeah. You know, but, we can never earn our own self righteousness to get to heaven. I mean, we, we just can't earn it. We got to go through Jesus Christ and His righteousness. Mm-hmm. There's That's the just, only way. Yeah, I mean, anything we do to try to please God, it's not it's not going to mean anything because He truly is the only way. Jesus finished it at the cross. He said it's finished, and you know, like earlier when we were 
talking about Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. He has blotted out the handwritings and ordinances. Uh huh. And, he, and nailed it to the cross. He nailed them to the cross. Ain't that something? I love that Bible verse. Uh huh. Yeah, I don't think the Amish read Colossians a whole lot. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think they want to read it. I, well, they're not going to want to because it actually, literally, the King James Version uses the word ordinance, uh-huh. which is what they follow the ordinance and the rules. And it literally says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances and then nailing it to the cross. It says the handwriting is of ordinances which were against us. Mm-hmm. Wow. They're against them. Yeah. Let's see here. Melinda Gingrich. I am from the Maine. I am from Maine, and they are very strict with the... I didn't even know there's Amish in Maine. There is. Yeah. Wow. There's Amish everywhere. I don't know any... Well, I know one guy that was from Maine, but yeah, he came to Kentucky, but... She says they are very strict in Maine with their showroom in weddings. If you have a boyfriend, you have to take him in a dark room with you and be in the room for 15 to 20 minutes. She says you had to. Wow. Wow, that's, that's just crazy. <laughs> Not telling what they do in there. Enos Schwartz and Trooper says, Hey, Ezra, we're enjoying listening to this. <laughs> By the way, Enos... Who 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 might know uh, the Swartz and Trooper name? Where, where'd that come from? Does anybody know? Put that in the comments because I want to know because there's a lot of you Swartz and Trooper Amish that have the last name Swartz and Trooper. So I just wonder, was it a guy named Swartz? Do you know? I I had no idea. I have no idea how that name came up. Oh, I never knew that we were called Swartz and Trooper Amish, but I always thought we were choke me. Joe Church. Shows, yeah, because they use names for the yeah. church. I'm, I just thought of that because there's a lot of Swords and Trooper that had the last name Swords and Trooper. Uh-huh. So it's like, was there a man that started that <clears throat> Swords and Trooper thing and that's what they, that was his name, so they call him Swords and Trooper? I'm just curious. I'm still learning. I've, I've learned a lot since I've been doing the videos with all these ex Amish. Uh huh. Dave Beach says, We always played softball on weddings. Uh, that sounds more interesting than going to the basement and kissing everybody. <laughs> softball in wedding. We yeah. couldn't do that. We couldn't mm-hmm. play any softball. So softball in your Swords and Trooper Amish would have been considered too worldly. Yeah. We couldn't do wow. that. It was a game. It was a... Wow. Yeah. Probably no basketball either. No. No basketball. No volleyball. Because the Englishers do that. Yeah. <laughs> and because they do it, we can't do it. it it's poison. Yeah, it's poison. <laughs> Anything the English people did, no, can't do it because that's poison. That's from the devil. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, Jacob Wiggy says, my baptism was 18 weeks long, and I got nothing out of it. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's 18. I don't remember it being that long for our community, but. That was, whew, that would have been, uh, uh, we always do wow. it uh, nine weeks. Oh, it's in between, so 18 would make sense. If it's nine weeks of doing doing that, they skip. They have church every other Sunday. Yeah. So nine, nine, eighteen. So it would be eighteen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's right. A- eighteen. He, he, yeah, he said eighteen weeks. Yeah, yeah, eighteen weeks because of the in between Sunday. Yeah. See, that's another thing a lot of people don't know. The Amish only go to church every other Sunday. They don't go to church every Sunday. So it's every other Sunday. Yeah. But in between Sunday, we'd pop popcorn and play games. Yeah, that's exactly what we do. Get company. Yeah, visiting a lot. Yeah. A lot of people would get together and visit. If somebody had a newborn baby, we'd go visit them. Uh huh. I remember going out flying kites too. Yeah, we did that too. We one time took a brand new spool of thread. It was about this big. It was big. Yeah. And we just let her go until it was all the way out. And then all of a sudden we got almost out. And when that kite landed, it was. About a mile and a half out on somebody else's property. <laughs> yeah, like, probably couldn't see it no more. You're still hanging on to it. But well, we could see it. it, but it was just very little. <laughs> so Way we, up there. At least we, we knew how to have fun, too, with uh, some things. Uh-huh. Not just work, 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 work. Pretty sure our kite was a little bit worldly, though. Enos Schwarzentruber says, My daughter's laughing about all the kissing discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't you want to be Amish and run around the basement and play games about kissing each other? Yeah. 
Oh, man. Carla Kayser, she says, love to listen to these Q&As. Hey, we're just here to educate you, man. Their Amish are all different. Every community is different. They all got their own rules. I just learned a lot tonight. I didn't know that the Schwarzenegger's play games with kissing one another. Yeah. <laughs> I, did. I didn't know that either. I mean... <sighs> Yeah, it's just, it's amazing. Uh, Mary Shetler says, show is a separate room for a guy and girl at a time. Awkward if it it was a first cousin. <laughs> it's awkward if it was a first car cousin and not your boyfriend you make out with. What? You oh. get so much time, then one goes out, another chooses another one and keep going. Another chooses another one and keeps it going. Man, I'm glad I left the Amish. That is so <laughs> ridiculous. I don't want to make out with my cousin. I mean, come on. Yeah, me neither. You guys are absolutely uh, hilarious with some of the stuff you're sharing here. But it's it's stuff it's stuff that almost sounds untrue. Uh huh. I mean, it sounds like a storybook, but this is literally stuff that that is that the Amish do. Coming from experience. Coming from experience. Yeah. You guys lived it. You went through it. I, I, uh, I'm glad I can say I didn't kiss my cousin in the Amish. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, Dan Truck says the show was separate from the tag games. It was basically taking a girl to a separate room and having 15 minutes. I remember right with girl to cuddle and make out. Wow. That sounds so bizarre for me for coming from an old order community. We didn't do that crap. Speaking, Larry says, speaking of buggy wheels, imagine a sheriff's car with buggy wheels on it. <laughs> My ass off. Ah, that's what he said on there. At what age do they really start teaching the rules and expect you to obey it? Well, even even before you're baptized, your parents will tell you what the ordinance is and the rules, right? You gotta follow mm -hmm. them when you're real little. Yeah. And if you break them, even when you're little, I mean, I I remember doing things to get my mom and dad in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> As a teenager. I'd break the rules, but I wasn't baptized yet, so they go to my mom and dad since I wasn't baptized yet. Uh -huh. and, uh, and then do that to my mom and dad. Uh -huh. <laughs> I remember uh, growing up as kids, and if you don't stay quiet in church, you'd get disciplined from your parents. Yeah. You'd have to sit there like a brass little boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, to wrap the video up... Uh, I mean, we're probably about an hour into it. I, I, I just have so much fun. I could sit here all night long and talk about this stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. There's so many ex-Amish on here. I'm cracking up with some of these stuff they're sharing. Dave Beachy, my cousin from Wyoming, says, Yeah, you're right, Eli, but I'm just saying about their believing. I went to their church once. That was it. I have a friend who used to do a taxi, taxi trips for the Amish, and he told me one time that he wanted to become Amish. Is something like that possible? Yeah. We had a, we had a guy that be, joined the Amish. His name is Warren Fussner. A lot of people know oh, him. Oh, I know him. I yeah. do know him. Yes, he used to come to my dad's harness shop. Actually. Really? He did. Yeah. He, he was a preacher. He became a preacher. Yeah. 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 So he, just think about that. You can come from English world, join the Amish, get very religious, follow the rules, and don't break any, and then they'll vote you in to be a preacher. Mm-hmm. You know, there's one actually in Kentucky right now, in the community I left from. There's a guy that came from Seven Day Adventist, joined Amish. Really? Yeah. So it's possible, folks. If you want to be Amish and kiss the bishop on the lip, lips and make an oath to the church and then play games in the basement where you kiss everybody, you can do it. <laughs> you, you can set whatever goal you want, man. So uh, to wrap it up. Since you're an Amish auctioneer or an ex-Amish auctioneer, okay, how about you sell that for me? For how much? Ah, uh, I want I want to sell that for a hundred dollars. All right, I'm gonna bid a hundred dollars. Would you give me a hundred dollars now? Hundred dollars. I'm gonna. Yep. Now a hundred and five. Would you give me a hundred and five? Yep. Now a hundred and ten. Would you give me a hundred and ten? Now a hundred and ten. Now a hundred and fifteen. Would you give me a hundred and fifty? Now a hundred and twenty-five. Would you give me a hundred and twenty-five? Now a hundred and thirty. Would you give me a hundred and thirty-five? Now a hundred and forty. Would you give me a hundred and forty? Now a hundred and forty. Now a hundred and forty-five. 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 Now a hundred and forty-five
Yeah. All righty. Well, hey, thank you very much for joining me tonight. This was fun. I could have done this all night long. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I love doing this. Maybe we can do another one sometime. Thanks yeah. for coming all the way from Minnesota to come visit because it was awesome fellowship tonight with you. Talk about the Word of God and, and then do a, a video with everybody. Uh-huh. All right, man. Thank yeah. you. You bet. See you guys.